Hey there, art teachers. If you are looking for technology tips to make your life in the art room easier, have I got some game changing tips for you. In this video, I'm going to share tips and tools that I use every single day in my art room, things that I use to be more organized, to save time and to keep my students more engaged. I'm going to share everything from how I make my slides more interactive to how I keep up with my busy schedule to how I make grading more efficient. We're going to be leveling up your art room. Let's Let's jump right in. I personally use Google Slides for all of my lessons. No matter what you use for your slides and presentations, I highly recommend getting a slides remote. This allows me to keep my lesson flowing. I don't have to be right there at my laptop interacting with it. I can move around the room and engage with my students while I'm still in control of visuals. If you can, I recommend having a multi-screen setup. How I have mine set up is my laptop mirrors what is going to be on my board. I just have an interactive board. It is a wipe off board that you can write on with like Expo markers, but their projector kind of makes it smart. So there are pens that you can write with and interact with and you can use it as a touch screen. So whatever is on my laptop, my students can see up on that screen. And then I have it set up that my laptop, I can extend things over to this monitor. And what I like to do is when I'm working on, for example, my report cards, is I put my progress reports report cards over here in that um, program. And then on my laptop, I have my gradebooks for that class open. So I'm able to see both documents at the same time and I can more quickly enter in grades. This is great for when you are multitasking, when you want to show something up on the big screen, but you are also, I'm often grading, um, or working on another task on your laptop. This next technology tip, I happened on by accident. I was in the middle of teaching third graders and all of a sudden my slides got stuck. And I said, guys, I'm sorry. It's almost like it's frozen. I think I'm gonna have to restart my laptop. And the kids were like, well, did you press the freeze button on the remote? I'm sorry, what? Nobody taught me this. Nobody taught me this. On your remote, check out on the bottom there, I have an Epson uh, projector. There's a button on there that says freeze. And what it does is, is it freezes your slides. So let's say you have a visual of how to tie a knot and you wanna leave that up there while your students are weaving at their seats. You can press the freeze button and that visual stays up on the screen while your laptop can go on and do other things. So maybe you wanna show a video to some students that were absent last week to catch them up and you're gonna use your laptop for that. You can do that while your other students are seeing something else. I wish I'd known this years ago because I use my projector constantly, but really it's just using it for the speakers. When my students are working, we often listen to podcasts as a way to keep them quiet and engaged in their artwork. But in order to use the projector speakers, the projector has to be on. But I didn't necessarily want to not be using my laptop during that time, but I was kind of forced into doing that until I knew this trick. I really enjoy using Google Sheets as my digital gradebook. Now, I have a little template that I set up that I have available over on Teachers Pay Teachers, but you could easily create this for yourself. Why I love it is um, it is so easy to visually see a trend of like how the class did with something or how a student did overall by having each cell change colors once you enter in a number. So my grades are done one through four. And then every time I change the color, so I give students a two or a three, the cell, that little block uh, next to their name underneath that project changes colors. So I can still see the number, but I also see that color so I can see trends overall. I also love this because I can have different pages. For my grades, I actually have to give students, each student, four art grades every quarter. So there's different areas in which I grade students. I have a whole video that kind of goes into this and gives you like more tips and tricks. But overall, I'm giving different grades for like engages, um, their art media and techniques, their understanding, and then their effort. So I have multiple grade books, even just for the first quarter in Google Sheets. And this really keeps me organized. T checking out that template might be something that you want to do and something that you could implement in your art room. How I use it is I 
enter the students in not alphabetically, but in the order that they sit. And I find it makes it a lot easier um, to grade their artwork faster. Either I'm walking around the room and I'm grading things right directly into my laptop, or I use pre-printed mailing labels with the student's seat number on it. We simply shuffle the artwork into order, and then I'm able to grade it very quickly using that system. I have it color coded um, for the tables that they sit at, which just makes it even more easy to find a student within the class within those lists. One of my favorite personal technology purchases has been having an Apple Watch as an art teacher. Years ago, I came across an app and I have no affiliation to them whatsoever, uh, but it's called a timetable app and it's super colorful and it's interactive and you can set your schedule in there and then you can simply turn it on and turn it off and you can set up notifications that go with your schedule. So I set it up that um, it goes off five minutes before the next thing happens. So five minutes before I need to be out at bus duty, I get a little alert on my watch. Five minutes before the end of my class, I get a little alert. And when it is, let's say a school holiday, yesterday we had um, a day off of school, I just went into the app and turned off all the notifications. So I like it better than having like a bunch of alarms on your watch uh, that you have to like go in and manually turn on and off. I just either have my alerts for school on or I have my alerts from school off. Um, and I think that it was an app where you just spent like maybe $2 um, one time and I have used it for years. Um, why I love it is you can see it really well on your iPad and it's super colorful also on your phone. It can definitely go also to your Apple Watch. And it's just one of those things that really keeps me on track and keeps my day flowing. One thing that I discovered during virtual teaching that really stuck with me is using the Google Chrome bookmarks bar and really personalizing this so it was very meaningful and useful to me. I know a lot of people know how to pin things to that bar. Simply let's say you're inside of a document or on a website, you'll see in the search at the top that there's a little star. You simply just click on that star and then you can decide where you're gonna save it within your bookmarks bar. Now, how I level this up up is I created folders within that bar and one of the folders that I have is my lessons for that week so I have a folder with the weekly lessons and then when you open it up there is a folder in that bookmarks bar for each grade level I teach like 24 classes and just because of days off and holidays and things like that they're all slightly in a different place. So I might have three kindergarten lessons that are going on within the same week, and I'm able to access all of those slides very easily within that kindergarten folder. I don't have to take a deep dive into my Google Drive and then find each of those lessons. I can find it really easily. I have as my morning routine to go in and open up uh, the slides uh, decks that I'm going to need for that day. But this makes it really easy because it's already organized by the ones that I'm going to need for that week, the grade levels that I teach, and I can find them quickly. Another folder that I have is I have all of my grade books. They're pinned to the top, again, organized by grade level. I open up fifth grade, all my fifth grade grade books are right there. So if I need to grade something very quickly, let's say I, you know, my class is a few minutes late and I've got a couple minutes to grade something, I can jump right in and grade, which I really, really like. Um, another thing I have is I use name tag labels on all of my artwork. And there's some changes like when we have new students and things like that. So I keep that also pinned to the top so I can easily find um, those labels should I need to print more or should I need to edit them. Now, this is super powerful. If something happens to you, like it happened to me this past week, I had my laptop re-imaged. I got a new laptop. It wasn't working quite right. So I got my old laptop back. As soon as I logged in as me, all of my bookmarks came up in my brand new laptop so I could just jump in and go and have things just how I like it. And when I had to jump back into my old laptop, same idea, you logged into Google, everything you need, just the way you like it is there at the top. Now, one thing that I always keep up pinned there at the top is an app that's free called Google Keep. So Google Keep is a free app within the Google 
meat. And how I use it is simply as a second brain. I absolutely love using this to organize things because it syncs. I can see things on my watch from my Google Keep. I can see it on my school laptop. I can see it on my computer at home, on my iPad, wherever I'm at. If I can log into Google, I can access these lists. So it's something that's always with me. I might not always have a sticky note to write things down or a journal to write things down in. So it's a really great place to keep things all together. Now, what do I keep in there? Um, I personally love it because you can set up things so that a list, and it's kind of like virtual sticky notes, but a list could have a checklist. So you can like check things off, which I just find so satisfying. Um, and in one little click of a button, you can uncheck all the items. So things that you do like every morning, like I always open up my slides. I always get out my grade books for that day. Um, I, I usually almost always have to like unload the drying rack before my students come in. I write down all of those morning little art teacher chores and I just repopulate them every day and then check them off as I go. When I wanna add something in, it's super easy to do that. So I set it up as I have one that is my morning to list things I need to do before my first class starts I have one for the afternoon what I'm gonna do after school and then I have one um, for what I need to do in the evening sometimes it's things to just kind of reset uh, items so that I'm ready for the next day at school I have separate um, to-do list for the weekend on there and you can pin whatever you want to the top so you can have like hundreds of these you can search and find them um, so you don't have to like really limit yourself to just having like three little uh, to-do list I'll often just pin those up to the top as my regular thing. Like on the weekend, I would say, I have one for my personal to-dos and I have one for any school to-dos uh, or business to-dos that need to get done. Um, I love it for writing down like all my classes in a list so that when I'm doing my progress reports, I can keep track of like which ones are done. Uh, it's great for capturing different ideas that I might have for like a Teachers Pay Teachers project or, you know, I have an upcoming work day and I want to make like a separate work list for that day. It is just such a great place uh, to save all of those things, to know that they're all together, to get them out of your brain so you can worry just a little bit less about all the things we juggle as art teachers. This next tool, once I discovered it, I would not want to teach without it. And that is a voice amplifier. I wear this all the time throughout the school day. The way that mine is set up, it does have a built-in speaker to my classroom. This is no longer um, available, so I don't recommend this exact one, but any even like portable system could really save your voice and therefore save your energy. Now I'll explain how I use it. I use this only when I'm talking to the entire class and they are quiet and listening. So I turn this on um, when my students are hearing the lesson so that I don't need to like project and fill the whole room. I once had an art room with like a really high ceiling and it just filled my voice. Um, I use this at the end when I'm going through the cleanup instructions for everyone and my students know that when I'm using this I'm talking to everyone and it's a time to listen. I'm not using this to shout over my students. I'm simply using this as a tool to amplify my voice. Now why I don't use it all the time is I'm having tons of little side conversations and quickly uh, if I kept it on students would know to tune what I'm saying out. They know that when I'm talking in this, it means that everyone is going to stop, look, and listen, and that it needs to be quiet during those times. Just one of those tools. I said this at the beginning, but I would never, ever want to teach without. One of my favorite tips with Google Slides is inserting the videos that you want to use within your lesson directly into your slides. When you have your slide open that you want to put the video in there, you simply go to insert at the top, you select video, and then you paste in the URL to your YouTube video or where you want it to go. What's even better is you can edit and enter in what time you want the video to start and stop. So let's say you only want to show your students the first three minutes of the video. You can have the video start playing uh, at the zero and then stop exactly at the three minutes and just show that exact clip that you want without you having to follow along and make sure, you know, the scene with nudity in artwork or something doesn't show to your third graders. I don't know this from experience. Um, another tip that I really like uh, that I saw in someone else's art room uh, with Google Slides and I sometimes use as well is you may want to consider 
start, especially if you're starting out, instead of making like a slide deck for each lesson, you might want to do it by mediums. Um, this person had done clay and then they had all their clay tool pictures, all their clay techniques. And then they had the videos in there for each grade level of the specific project that they were going to do. I know for myself, I do this with glazing because the information is the same for every single grade level. I do level it up and give more information as we go, but I can really use that same slide deck to share the information. My glazing uh, information includes like, what is clay? We talk about where it comes from, the process of the clay drying, how we're gonna be doing the glazing, what our kiln room looks like. There's like a little tour of the kiln room video that's linked in there. And then I just have it set up that I share it with all of my classes when they're doing their clay lesson. I also do this for my opening routine and my rules. I share that in another video. We go over the rules and we have like a picture of the Mona Lisa and remind people how to sit. Um, happens every single time at the beginning. So I have a slide deck called rules and I show that to every single class when they come in. Organizing things like that might be something that really helps you as well. The one piece of technology that has leveled up my art teaching the most is making instructional videos for my students. I teach a lot of multi-language learners, but this really engages and helps all learners to be more successful in your art room. Now, this is something that's really a lot to take on at once, but even if you made one video for each grade level that you teach every year, over time, you have a very large collection of videos. Um, I love to suggest that you start with things that are messy and make demos for those first, things like your clay and sculpture and painting lessons, because that way your hands don't get dirty, your desk area doesn't get dirty, and your instruction moves at the pace of life. I don't have to tell you this, but students' attention spans are getting shorter, okay? They're used to TikTok, they're used to Instagram, they're used to YouTube shorts where things move fast. If you've got a slow demo, you're gonna lose them, okay? So having a quick video that I put in like time lapses, I'm able to speed up uh, when I'm working on the artwork, this, the rate that it plays back uh, within the video, add fun music, add graphics, add words to it, that hooks them in and pulls and keeps their attention. So it's something that I feel like is really worth the effort. I also take a lot of photos. Um, the photos are sometimes used within my videos. They're also used within my lesson. Like if I'm teaching students the steps of how to do something, they might see it play out in the video, but they might have those steps printed out at their table so they can see those steps in a photo. Might have that slide left up on the screen while they're working. I also take pictures of the materials and how things are set up in the art room so they know like where you go to get the art shirts, where you put the paintbrushes back, and that's really communicated in a very clear way. Um, I hope that's something that you will be inspired to try in your art room. If you are, I made an entire video for art teachers about how to make these instructional videos for their classroom. I'm going to link that down in the comments and then here next. Also, don't forget to go on to my Teachers Pay Teachers and check out those Google Sheets gradebooks. I think that's going to be a wonderful resource for all of us.